Hello folks, this is AJ again and welcome back to Cybersecurity Weekly, your weekly security news digest. In this podcast, we will be summarizing the top security related news, hacks and releases that you must know before you start your week. This is fiscal week 14 and here are your top 3. Mozilla patched two Firefox browser zero day vulnerabilities this week that are still being actively exploited in the wild. Both bugs have critical ratings and allow remote attackers to execute arbitrary code or trigger crashes on machines running versions of Firefox prior to 74.0.1 and its business-friendly Firefox extended support release 68.6.1. The bugs impact Firefox browser version running on Windows, Mac OS and Linux operating systems. Traced as CV 2020-6819, this bug is used after free vulnerability tied to the browser component NSDoc shell destructor which exploits the functions and are used to read the HTTP headers. The second vulnerability tracked as CVE 2026820 is also a use after free bug. In this case, the attackers are targeting the streams API, which is responsible for breaking a resource that you want to receive over network down into small chunks. Successful exploitation of the most severe of these vulnerabilities could allow the arbitrary code execution. Depending on the privileges associated with the user, an attacker could install programs, view, change or delete data or create new accounts with full user rights. Users whose accounts are configured to have fewer rights on the system could be less impacted than those who operate with administrative user rights. Here goes the second big news this week. It is about Docker. The Docker cloud containerization technology is under fire with an organized self-propagating crypto mining campaign targeting misconfigured open Docker daemon API ports. The summary of the attack is also described by Aquasec. The attack pattern starts with the attackers identifying the misconfigured Docker API ports that has been left open to the public internet. They then access the port and the Docker instance connected to it and run rogue Ubuntu containers and runs a crypto miner. The DevSecOps teams can take steps to protect against this and similar threats, starting with making sure that their Docker containers are locked down, identify all cloud resources and group them by some logical structure, review the authorization and authentication policies and adjust them according to the principle of least privilege. It is also advised to use vulnerability scanners and investigate logs and look for malicious activities. Time for the third big news of this week. It is about the hot web conference tool which became famous recently while the world started to work from home. Zoom has been there for about 9 years now, but the immediate requirement of an easy-to-use video conferencing app during the coronavirus pandemic overnight made it one of the most favorite communication tools for millions of users around the world. There have been many flaws detected in the last few weeks. The first flaw stems from an issue with Zoom's installer and allows unprivileged attackers to gain root privileges. For Mac users, generally these issues are not dominant because Apple validates the binary unless it is executed as root. But the problem starts when a user or an attacker overrides this check. For example, when a user tries to manually install an application by right-clicking it and running it as an administrator or a root. Because it would then not be validated and that would give the root access to the application binaries. The second zero-day flaw gives attackers microphone and camera access, allowing for a way to record Zoom meetings or snoop in the victim's personal lives. Recently, a lot of security issues are being reported on Zoom, like the FBI on Tuesday warned of multiple reports of conferences being disrupted by pornographic or hate images and threatening language, so-called the Zoom bombing attacks. Another was one which could enable attackers to steal Windows credentials of users. Uh, The third attack was about leaking the email addresses and photos of thousands of users. In fact, there are claims saying Zoom's propaganda of promising end-to-end encryptions were false. In summary, these are the two things you can do now. 
either update Zoom application, but this will not guarantee you of unknown vulnerabilities exploiting you without you knowing it. Or use stable applications like Microsoft Teams, Skype, Google Hangouts, Google Duo, etc. That's all for this week, my friends. I will be back next week with latest on cybersecurity. Please don't forget to like and subscribe my channel for your weekly security news feed. Till then, stay security vigilant and take care.